What's going on? It's another great day. This is Keyshawn, and welcome to my show, Undisputed Presents All Facts, No Breaks. And joining me today on this podcast is former NFL tight end, two-time pro bowler. He's also a Super Bowl champion and an actor, a rapper? My man, Vernon Davis. What's up, Vernon? What's going on with you, Keyshawn? Nothing much, but also joining you and me is my son, Keyshawn Johnson Jr., who is joining us for the umpteenth time. He's going to be our moderator and get us in and out of certain things and make this thing fabulous. So there he is. How you doing? What's going some on, bass Junior? in your How voice, you doing, man? man? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 what part of the world you in right now, Vernon? I'm in South Florida. I'm down in Miami visiting my brother. Oh, okay. That's what's up. What, man, you know, what's this like? I had the, um, last week we had, uh, what is it? Not the long shooter. What's it? What, what is it? Lethal uh, shooter. Yeah, the lethal shooter. The lethal shooter was on from us, with us. He from He's also from the DMV. What's it like being from the DMV? Man, it's, it's nothing but love in the DMV. I mean, especially with all the talent that we got that's coming out of D, uh, Washington, D.C., starting with Kevin Durant. Uh, Josh Cribs. I mean, it's, I can go on and on and on. I mean, there's so much talent to come out of the area. But not only that, I mean, DC has so much to offer, man. It's just they're continuing to to build and and just uh, take DC to a whole nother level. I love it. I you love know, it a, a lot. Man, it's so crazy because y'all claim all three, right? Y'all claim DC, Maryland, and Virginia. It's like, well, wait a minute, man. You can't do that. You either you either from DC, <laughs> you from Maryland. Or are you from, G- from Virginia? That's like us saying we from California, Arizona, and Vegas. See, that's, see, that's new, Keyshawn. They didn't have, it wasn't like that before. When I was growing up, when I was younger, it was either you from D.C., Maryland, or Virginia. And I used to claim D.C. If you D.C. guys didn't look at Maryland and Virginia guys the same. I mean, it was, it, it's just, it was just a different vibe. But now, you know, it's, we're able to come together and join forces. That's why we call it DMV. But when you were growing up, did you play, you know, basketball obviously was your first love, but did you ever get a chance to, to run up against Carmelo or KD or any of those top-notch dogs, Allen Iverson, when you was playing? Yeah, Patrick Ewing, uh, Patrick Ewing's son and Kevin Durant was playing at this school called Montrose Christian, and I was at Dunbar Senior High School, and we played against them. Um, and I remember, I vividly remember playing against KD. He was just this thin, this thin tall kid that could hoop really well. And uh, it, it was just good times, man. It was just good times. Like I said before, a lot of talent that comes out of D.C. So it's, it's able, it feels good to be able to, um, to be a part of that, that crew, that group of people who are, who are part of that elite class. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the combine just ended, what, about a week or so ago, <laughs> uh, NFL combine. And you were known as this freakish athlete coming out of Maryland, all ripped up fast, even to the fact that you still own and hold the 40 record at a 4 3 8, which I dispute. I don't think that was that fast. I think, you know, I think they they lying about it. But they got you in the record books as a 4 3 8 at, at the combine for a tight end. What did you do to train to get you to run that fast? So it's just natural, just what you do. No, I was always that fast. I remember when I first walked into into Dunbar Senior High School, right? I, I walked into the coach's coach's office and I said, Coach, can I I want to play any, can I try for the team? He was like, yes. I said, I'll play any position that has to do with scoring touchdown. I got out on the field and I was running by everybody. And what happened when I got to college, I was able to put on weight. I went from 225 all the way up to like 250. And I was able to keep my, maintain my speed. I mean, I was surprised to tell you the truth because I, I felt like I was going to lose some speed as I was getting bigger. But what happened was I was able to get more explosive. I was able to get, I was stronger. And I just maintained it really well just from the hard work and dedication that I put in. No, you was a, known obviously as a freakish athlete, but then things kind of, they were good. And then they mm-hmm. turned, some people would say it turned for the, for the worse with the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm sure that you've answered this question 17,000 million times in your post career about the, the famous rant and Mike Singletary post game conversation with the media where he said he wants winners. How did that change you at all? If it did seeing that watching it and then going home, being there, 
seeing it again and again and again and having to answer questions over time, over and time, over again? Well, as I take myself back to that moment, <clears throat> during that time, I felt like I felt like Singletary threw me under the bus. You know, as a as a young man trying to find himself and you think everything that you're doing is right, but it's when it's really not. But you you always need that one person or that special individual in your life to help you find yourself. And Mike Singletary was that for me. And as I after I met with him, it it hit me that he was trying to just mold me, help me, cared about me, right? And when I share this story now, and I, you know, I'm really, it comes from a place of humility and just gratefulness. I'm very grateful for Singletary to be there because the impact he made on my career, my life during that time and my life now has been tremendous. He's like a father figure to me, he's a brother, and I'm happy to be a part of his life and have, and to play with him uh, as my coach, uh, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for, for anything in the world because he is, he's a great human being, great man. And I, I'm really thankful that he was there during that time because so, I needed it. Yeah. You had 10 head coaches. I mean, better yet, you had three head coaches in 10 years in the National Football League with Mike Nolan, mm -hmm. Mike Singletary, and Jim Harbaugh. How do they, I want to show mm -hmm. you the clip of Mike Singletary and I want you to tell me how they differ from one another. Okay. Vernon, Vernon just, uh, it was something that I told everybody at the very beginning of the week. I will not tolerate um, players that think it's about them when it's about the team. No. You know what? I, I, th this is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with 10 people and, and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else, rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them, cannot win with them, cannot coach with them, can't do it. I want winners. I want people that want to win. What's your I want people that want to win. <laughs> Can't play with them. What, what's your thoughts on those three different coaches that you had? How they different? <clears throat> Man, they totally different. Mike Nolan was very laid back, very chilled. You know, he didn't he didn't say, I mean, he was he would talk when he had to, but he was just like so mild mannered, just a nice human being, man. Just just great, great to work with. Um Mike Mike Singletary was a more old school approach. And he was just, he's one of those type of guys that he had, you know, he made his mark. If you were, if you wasn't doing anything, if you wasn't doing the right things or the things that he considered uh, right, or just being a part of the team, then he was going to let it be known, right? He was going to figure out a way to discipline you and, and punish you for your behavior. And, and, you know, that's old school. That's that's the way, that's what I'm used to. You know, I'm used to that. That's how I grew, I grew up. But then you have Coach Harbaugh, who's, he's like the new school. You know, he has his ways of um, um, rewarding, punishing, um, and just getting the behavior that he wants. You know, he's very strategic about it in, in his approach. He's a, he's, he's like a master when it comes to getting players to rally behind him and getting what he wants. He's good at that. So you won a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. What was it like playing with Peyton Manning? Like, what made him a great quarterback and leader? Peyton was Peyton was awesome. I remember when I first walked in, and yeah, you know, I didn't know Peyton, Peyton that well. I just knew him through through football. But he called me. He's like, hey, run, run, run. "Come, come, come, see me when you get in. <laughs> Talk to me when we get in the locker room." Yeah. I said, so I go in the locker room, and he was just you know just talking about the game plan and what he wanted to do and. And just seeing him operate, like when he was in the locker room, he would minimize himself, right? You wouldn't even know he was there. You know, he'd give the floor to all the guys who, because in the locker room, you have so many different personalities. You have guys who, who are jokesters, guys who want the want the attention. So Peyton just sit back, you know, just being a great teammate. And But then when it's time to play, when he's on the field, practice field, in the meeting room, he takes over and stands out like a general. He's a, he stands out like a sore thumb. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing to see. You know, I thought I saw a lot of greatness in San Francisco, but when I walked into Denver, I saw it all. 
Well, speaking of the 49ers, you played in two Super Bowls. What do you think of the 49ers players not knowing the OT rules? Well, I think I, that's all just miscommunication. I think uh, I think they should have been done a better job explaining like the rules. But I get it. You know, in the heat of the battle, it's the Super Bowl, the biggest game of their life, and they're they're focusing on the execution, the game plan, all those different things. Not really worried about the the, the, the biggest piece, which is understanding the rules of the game. The rules are everything. So I I just, I just think that's just a learning a learning um, just a learning process for them to be able to you know imp- really implement that when they go back to the Super Bowl next time. Well, just in general, like, you know, the rules are very important. They come in, the officials come in during training camp and they tell you all about the rules, especially if there's been a lot of different changes. So guys need to really make sure that they uh, listen and know those rules because if not, it costs you the game. Yeah, it's 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 a lot that, you know, goes on in the National Football League. As you know, your brother, Vontae, played mm-hmm. 10 years Vernon in the National Football League at a, as, at, a, mm-hmm. at a high level at the defensive back position. And then he decided one time that he didn't want to do it anymore and made a decision <laughs> at halftime against the Buffalo Bills that he was just going to retire. How did you find out about that and how bizarre was that to you? Yeah, he called me when I was in the locker room. I was at, It was halftime for us as well. And when I was with the Washington Commanders wow. and Vontae called me out. Well, I saw a missed call, and I said, let me call him back because he never calls me during halftime. So I called him, and he was like, I'm retiring. And, you know, I thought he was joking, you know, because Vontae played games like that every now and then. But I thought it was a joke, so I called my grandmother. I called my agent. And it was like, yeah, he's really retiring. He, I, you know, I was like, he, I couldn't really understand. It was just so much for me at the time. Um, but, you know, when I, when I talked to him, I called him after the game, and he, he really explained himself. He said he just – it was something going on mentally and he couldn't, that he couldn't really explain. He just felt like he didn't want to play anymore. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it just caught me by surprise for sure. Just like it caught everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, that was just a, it was an interesting moment for me. Yeah. yeah and I'm sure, I'm sure again, those are the types of things that are most important is to be able to understand what somebody must be going through and try to get them the necessary, yeah. you know, advice, help, whatever it is to change their behavior patterns or whatever that may be in that case. But you feel like back in September, you you said that you could still play and you may come out of retirement. Am I understanding that correctly? No, nah, man, I was just talking. No, physically, I can still play. <laughs> I still run routes. I got my son that's 16 years old. He always, he's about my height. So I got to, to me, I feel like I always have to be prepared, you know, to be able to keep up with him, uh, especially because we, you know, when we work out together, and, um, it's just one of those things, you know, as a football player, we always feel like we have to be prepared for something. And I've, I've never really stopped um, when it comes to just uh, running routes and feeling like I have to be ready. It's always, it's always been there. So I, I feel like I can play physically, physically, but not mentally. Well, a couple months ago, Tom Brady called out the NFL for becoming less physical. Do you agree? Do you think the NFL is getting a little too soft? I think the NFL is getting a little too soft. I mean, look, it's becoming flag football. You see what's going. You see what's going on. I mean, you can't hit people anymore. Uh, that's what back in the back when I was playing, we was playing Super Super Bowl Forty Seven. When we went to Super Bowl Forty Seven, I mean that year was dynamic for us. I mean, and the year before that, I mean, we had Dante Whitner who changed his name, Dante Hitner, I should say, uh, Sean Golson. I mean, those guys were coming downhill and they were just laying the wood, man. They were, they were bringing it. That's what I was used to. Adrian Wilson, um, Cam Chancellor, those guys. Mm. So who is on your Mount Rushmore of tight ends? Hmm. I'm going to have to say Travis Kelsey, Rob Gronkowski, um, Shannon Sharp, Tony Gonzalez. Okay, okay. Dad, what do you think? What's your top four? Your Mount Rushmore. 
Man, I I I I would put Travis Kelsey there. I'm gonna put Mike Ditka there. Um, I mean, I could put Kellen Wins. See, I'm I'm I could put Kellen Winslow <laughs> there because I watched him growing up. I know about John Mackey. Um, Gronk, Gronk. That's that's that. I would probably do those four right now. I'd I'd hate to leave Tony Gonzalez off, but can't leave Tony. Gonzalez. There's only four. Tony Gonzalez doesn't have any Super Bowl rings. Uh, where Gronk has a number, and so does Kelsey. So does Mike Ditka, and I believe John Mackey. I believe he has one. Um, but then I could, you know, you start talking about Ozzie Newsome. I mean, it's just, it's so many, it's almost like the receiver position, yeah, right? It's, it's just a lot of, yeah. a lot of players yeah. that have played that position have gone on to have major, major success. But after mm -hmm. you retired, man, you didn't stop working. Now you're an actor. You, you're, you are an actor. You claim to be a rapper. You know, you claim to be a rapper. I know you, I know you're an actor. I know that. I know that for a fact that you're an actor. You you played a serial killer, which is a little scary, in a Morgan uh, in, in a Morgan Freeman movie, The Ritual Killer. What was it like working with him and be a part of that cast? Working with Morgan Freeman was it was that was a special moment for me. That's something that I that I can um I can take with me for the rest of my life. Because watching that man at 80 something years old, God and do what he what he did. I'm I'm not talking about the performance. I'm talking about the work before the performance. I mean, I watched him. He was the first one on set. He was the last one to leave. Mm -hmm. And I stood there watching him when we were, off, we were off to lunch. But he stayed there talking to the director for 15 more minutes, just trying to have an understanding of what the director wanted. And I saw, I just, it just blew me away because most guys like Morgan Freeman, they're going to do what they do, then get back to their trailer. But this dude took his time. Not only did he take his time, he also worked with me. Like he was, he was giving me tips and, and reminders uh, when it came to our scene, which was A plus because you don't know, guys like at his level, especially me just coming in doing this thing. You know, I'm just leaving football and coming into acting. He didn't have to do that, so I applaud him. So in NFL news, the NFL free agency is going crazy right now. One of the biggest stories is Russell Wilson, who is now a Pittsburgh Steeler. Let's take a listen to what Colin Coward had to say about this. Denver didn't work. He was asked to be the savior. They had to give up all the draft capital. They paid him a fortune, limiting what they could get. But Russell Wilson isn't a savior here. He will be an elevated piece at an important position. He will increase efficiency. We've seen him with a strong defensive coach. We've seen him with a run game before. We've seen him with nice weapons. He got to Super Bowls. Mike Tomlin is the CEO of this outfit. Russ is like a new vice president and director of sales. So, Vernon, Dad, did the Steelers get better by signing Russell Wilson? Absolutely. 100%. They got better. They got better, Vernon. I'm a director of sales. Yeah, yeah, they did get better. I they think got so. better. I, look, man, I, I believe, I strongly believe that Everyone needs to change every now and then, especially sometimes you can go somewhere and you you, you think it's going to be that this is it. This is this is my this is my spot. Right. But it might be the next spot after that. And I feel like Russell Wilson has all of the tangible has all the tools to be a proven quarterback. I mean, he's done it over and over. He's he's been to the Super Bowl. He's won so many games, broken records. It's just a matter of time. And I think this is his time. I think he has a lot. To prove, and he knows that he signed a prove it deal with this with the Steelers one year deal, um, and he took less money than he normally make. Less but money, he, and he understands. What you mean? Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're making forty million dollars this year. Ain't no dang on less <laughs> money. <laughs> he said, "But look, if you think if you think about it, Russell's Russell's. What I mean by that is the the years. Like they 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 brought him in for one year because I think that's their way of saying that." You have to prove this to us. We don't really believe we we don't we we like you. We think you're capable capable, but we part of us don't believe. You know what I mean? 
And that's what happens when you sign those ones. I did it when I went to Washington, to the Washington Commanders. They brought me in there, but they didn't believe in me. They said, he has it. We're going to take a chance on him. We're going to see what he can do. And we'll let the rest fall where it needs to fall. Yeah, I, I it's think... It's just the years. <laughs> I, they didn't. They didn't lock him in for those years. That's what I meant by that. Yeah, I think I think Russell brings something to the team that they hadn't had in a long time since the the, the early ages of Ben Roethlisberger, a quarterback that knows how to play, play for a coach that is is ball run ball dominant in the defensive minded, much like Pete Carroll was in Seattle, where mm -hmm. Russ could do certain things off schedule wise, but they had a strong running game and a dominant defense. And then he did what he needed to do to help them get to those two Super Bowls. I think he falls in a similar situation where the only thing people are going to look at in that locker room and question is his authenticity of who he is. What is Russell Wilson? Is he a phony baloney that people seem to think he is? Or is he a genuine person like I think he is, opposed to some mystery that's out there in the world that people think because he started dating Sierra and he got married to her that his whole persona and personality completely changed. So people in the locker room feel at times he could be a little phony. But Mike Tomlin signed off on it. And when Mike Tomlin signs off on it, I personally think that the locker room is going to say, Vernon, he's okay. Mike coach got it. He likes him. So we go embrace it. Opposed to Sean Payton coming in to Denver and basically inheriting him. So he's coming in with one eye open, one eye closed. So it never really felt like that was his guy at all. He inherited something opposed to Mike Tomlin signing off on it. So I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be all right in, in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think he's going to be all right too. I, th I think he is. And, and like you just said, you thought you said his whole persona as far as going from Russell Wilson, the guy who was always in Seattle, giving back to the community, always, in, in the hospitals and things of that nature. Now we see Russell Wilson as the guy who's always on the red carpet, right? <laughs> That's what we're seeing. So, so who, so who is it? Who is he? And I get it just from being in the locker room. I get it. And we are free to be and do what we want to do. Uh, and understand that there's always going to be haters behind whatever it is that we're doing, especially if my, my wife is a mega star and I'm a mega star, right? Yeah. I'm going to have that. But at the end of the day, I think, who you who you are as a person, and who you were when you were hit, were in Seattle? You need to stay that same person in in uh, in Pittsburgh, and I and I strongly believe that Russell is that same person. I don't I don't think he changed. I think sometimes the media pictures, photos, and videos can um, can down, kind of disrupt things and make people believe something else. But I saw Russell at the Super Bowl. I uh, walked up to him. So he and Sierra. And I walked up to him, you know, saying hello. He he seemed to be the same guy that I've always known. Uh, his energy seemed to be the same. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is just trying to figure out uh, what we're going to get out of him uh, as a football player, right, as far as the commitment and his ability to be able to execute and achieve what he's achieved in the past. Mm-hmm. So, Vernon, one of the other huge signing involves your former teammate, Kirk Cousins, who signed a four-year, $100 million contract with the Falcons. As someone who has played with him, do you think that this is a kind of deal that he deserves? I think Kirk Cousins de deserves this kind of deal, yes. And I say that because you can't go out and find a, a quarterback that's doing what Kirk Cousins is doing, right? Year over year, he's proven that he can throw for 250 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards in, in a single game. You can't find that. It, it just doesn't happen that way. And, and I'm coming from a place where I've played with so many different quarterbacks, Trent, Trent Dilford to Chris Winkie. I mean, you name it. Um, I think that he has a shot. He has the ability to be able to take this team to a championship. I don't know when. Can't tell you that, but it's going, <laughs> it's going to, it's going to rely on him with Keyshawn just said, having a very good defense, right. And having everything around him that can make this thing click a, a good running game, uh, great special teams, just all around great team. And I think he has a shot. I mean, a lot of people said that about Alex Smith, they said he, he couldn't take us to the promised land. And 
I mean, he did. He he got us there a couple times, um, but it just didn't go. It just didn't go our way. And um, but I think Kirk Cousins is definitely fit into that mold. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I am not signing off on that. I can't do it. <laughs> can't can't do it, man. Can't I like. I like. I like. <laughs> I like the fact you're sticking up for your former teammate, but I can't do it. <laughs> I, I cannot do it. No, that man have made 400. He will have made at the end of this deal, $411 million. Jeez. And I don't see $411.6 million in his career at the end of this deal. Tom Brady was slightly over $300 million in his long 21 plus year career. 10 Super Bowl appearances, seven Super Bowl victories, Countless MVPs and da 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 da. I can't I can't do this to Kirk. I, look, I'm glad he got his money, Vernon. I'm not hating on nobody money at all. I can't count another man's money. But if I'm the general manager or I'm the president in Atlanta, I'm not giving Kirk Cousins that money because my team isn't better than the 49ers, isn't better than the Cowboys, the Eagles, or the Green Bay Packers with Jordan Love. And you're asking me. To pay him essentially money to come and up unseed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in that division, which is weak, by the way. But once I get out of the division, I'm not gonna beat them other teams. So in two years, I'm gonna be in the same spot looking for a new quarterback again. So I'm like, I just don't, but but right place, right time, it's the market. That's what happens in these situations. But for a guy to play as long as he's played and only one. Once one playoff game, it's just hard for me. To, I, it's just hard to swallow. I'm like, I yeah. just can't see it. But that's it's, the league, it's, though. That's how the league is. Yeah, no, it is. You're right. Yeah, I, I think it's something they see in they see in him. Um, I, you know, I played with him, and I and I and I felt he he has great ability. And Keisha, you you know what I'm talking. You seen him gone gone out. He went out and many times and, and threw for. Um, 400, 300, 400 yards, just like it was nothing. No, I mean, he's he got the statistics numbers. in the regular season, no question about it. But when they paying him all this money, you would just think that, well, right, at, least right, Alex, at least Alex Smith was winning in the postseason, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he, yeah. he, it was just, I don't know. It's just a different, it's just a different place at a different time. If I was Atlanta, yeah. I probably would have tried to trade for Justin Fields if that was me. But I don't know if the Bears really want to give away Justin Fields like they're claiming just to play poker as we getting ready to lead into the draft. So we'll see. Well, he'll be throwing to Kyle Pitts, the highest drafted tight end ever at number four. Vernon, you're next at number six. Do you think the move to get Cousins will make Kyle Pitts finally at the elite tight end level? Yeah, Kirk Cousins has, um, he has, um, he really, he can really, he gels really well when it comes to tight ends. I watched him with uh, myself as well as Jordan Reed when I was in Washington. And he's just, uh, that's just his safety, his safety net. You know, he's always going to go to the tight end. And tight ends usually put up great numbers when they're with him. I think he's going to really, really um, uh, achieve an ample amount of success with Kirk Cousins. And he's going to tap into his real potential for sure. Keyshawn, did you know that Vernon Davis appeared with me a year ago? on Netflix Iron Chef. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I didn't know he was on there. Yeah, he was he was <laughs> he was competing against me. Man, he didn't cook nothing. He's sitting over there. He burned <laughs> up something. I, I don't what did you burn up, man? You burned something up. I don't know what you, what you <laughs> Yeah, we was on Iron Chef together competing against one another. That was fun though. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. You lost, you you lost, right, Keyshawn? Yeah, you, you we, we, we 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 lost. <laughs> yeah. But but you see but that, Marcus, you see that? No, no, no. But Marcus Samuel had been the Iron Chef for quite some time. It was time to make a change, you know. And and it was it was fun though. It was time to make a change. It was fun. So yeah, Vernon no, didn't Vernon no. didn't cook anything though. He was over there faking. <laughs> so no, we were just talking about how crazy the free agency signings been. We talked to um, Eddie George last week about Derrick Henry possibly leaving. So breaking news: Derrick Henry's to the Ravens, two years, twenty million. How do you guys feel about that? Well, I knew I knew mm. he was going to go over there. I mean, he wasn't going to go to Dallas. It just made perfect sense. The Ravens tried to trade for him during the year. They didn't get that done, and it made it made sense all the sense of the world when Chris Johnson was on with us we talked about 
what quarterback he would love to play with. This is Chris Johnson that played with the Tennessee Titans. And the quarterback that he wanted to play with if he was still in the National Football League was Lamar Jackson. Life is a lot easier for Derrick Henry with Lamar Jackson than it would have been in Dallas with Dak Prescott. So I'm glad he got it done. I'm glad he's going to be with a team that can win. And hopefully he gets a, he gets that Super Bowl championship with Lamar Jackson in the near future. Yeah, that's going to be a scary team, man. I can't wait to see what they're going to do together. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. So the amazing. Eagles the Eagles signed Giants running back Saquon Barkley. What do you think of him playing for a division rival? And is this a good fit for him? We might want to go ask Tiki Barber. <laughs> I was just about to say, Tiki also mentioned, he said, you're dead to me. And Saquon responded. But um, I think we have some of those tweets up there. But um, yeah, do you guys think it's a good fit for him? Yeah, I think it's a good fit. As you can see, Tiki Barber basically saying he has no love. There's no love lost for Saquon Barkley for the New York Giants. You're dead to us, Saquon. Good luck. You're dead to me. Now, right. I don't know if it was tongue in cheek. Tiki has had in the past some run-ins with ex-teammates and things of that nature saying stuff. And, and you could tell that Saquon Barkley didn't take light of it. He wasn't happy about the situation. So he basically called Tiki a hater, saying Tiki had been hating on him the entire time. He At Tiki Barber, you've been a hater since I got to New York and all the dead to me talk. Don't smile in my face when you see me. Gee. I mean, that's real. That's real. I, I get what Saquon is saying. Dudes be, you know how I go, Vernon, they get to talking crazy until they run up on you and they see you and then they, oh, I didn't really mean to say that. So we'll see how this thing to be continued. <laughs> so during a 2014 Thanksgiving game between the 49ers and Seahawks, players were asked what their favorite Thanksgiving food was. Vernon, here's your viral response. Take a look. Hmm. Aside from turkey, my favorite dish, hmm, sweet potato yams. So Vernon, I have to ask, <laughs> <laughs> what is a sweet potato yam, and how does that differ from a sweet potato and a yam? Like, I was sort of when, he, when, he, when he said it, I was getting ready. To, I mean, I'm about to check your black card, man. I'm like, what the hell is nah. a sweet potato yam? <laughs> Just a mess up or sweet not? Sweet potato yams, man. You know you put the you know you mash it up. You mash the sweet potato up and you put the you put the uh, the marshmallows, the oh, butter, no. you know the brown sugar. <laughs> Those the yams, man. Oh, no damn marshmallows yeah, on your marshmallows. sweet potatoes, man. <laughs> I knew, on, man. but That's I knew. East Coast way. That's a DC I knew way, man. you was about to say some marshmallows on some yams. You know, dang on well, we don't put marshmallows on yams. No, no. No, yeah, man. Yeah, they do. That's like breadcrumbs on top of macaroni right. and cheese that you make at the crib. You ever had marshmallows on your yam? I've had it, but I would never prepare it that way. <laughs> I just wouldn't. Keyshawn, would I ever prepare Martin? Uh -huh. Not a chance. No, uh-uh. <laughs> no. You got to try, try some yams, man. Come on, man. You're going to convert over. Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, uh, -uh. You probably put. You see who to win it. Look, I beat your dad on Iron Chef. Man, man come you on, you gotta stop. follow me, man. <laughs> no, uh, uh. You probably put. You probably put breadcrumbs on top of the macaroni and cheese too, huh? <laughs> nah, man, I don't do that. Uh -uh. No, so Vernon, no, as someone no. who has made the jump to acting, can you rank these legendary football movies <clears throat> from this list? We're gonna pop it up right now. So you got so remember got, the Titans? Yeah, oh, remember the Titans. Man, I gotta go. Water remember Boy. the Titans number one. I'm going to go... Friday Night Lights, The Replacement. Friday Night Lights, number two. Rudy, The Blind Rudy, Side. Rudy, number three. Any Given Sunday in The Longest Yard. Yeah. Give us like a That's top a five. Man. Those, are some good Those are some good movies, man. Yeah, I, I would I would start with the Titans first. Then I would go... Yeah. Then I would go <clears throat> Any Given Sunday. Yeah. Then I would do Rudy. I never, Friday Night Lights, I didn't watch. You didn't like Michael Irving in The Longest Yard? The Longest Yard was just <laughs> funny. It wasn't, I mean, it was just a funny, as I tell Mike, you know, they had him in that, that prison suit. <laughs> I told him, I said, I said, I mean, that might not be a good look for you, Mike. You know, it might not be a good look for my guy. But, you know, uh, The Blind Side, I never saw The Blind Side. Um, what other, which other movie is that up there? 
the water boy, whatever. The three for me is the Titans, Rudy, and <laughs> and uh, any given Sunday. For sure. But Vernon, you had one of the best Under Armour commercials where the football term click clack came to life. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's play this clip from your boy, Delaney Oh, uh, come on. Don't do that to me, Keyshawn. Come on, dude. Do come on man, Junior. Don't do that to me. <laughs> so when I met Vernon, you know what I'm saying? He was click-clack to me. That's what I called him, click-clack. Mm -hmm. Click-clack. Because everybody knew him from click-clack. Obviously, and he cried during the draft. So I'm like, is that the dude that cried? But I didn't see, I didn't know how big he, he was until so I seen him, right? I'm like, oh. Bro, he is huge. But he didn't know who he was, but I did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They thought I was Vernon Homeboy. Didn't even play in the league at first because he'll be like, man, I like that girl. I'll run over there. Bah, bah. What's up? What's your name? Bah, tell me. I'll be like, you know who that is? They like, no, I'm like, that's Click Clack. They like to do the dude, Click Clack? I say, yeah, that's Click Clack. They like, what? I'm like, bring all your homegirls. Let's do it. That's nothing. That's why they call me D-Love because they like, that boy good. <laughs> 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 Come on, D. Love so threw me under the bus, man. <laughs> so Vernon, D. Love just threw me under the bus. <laughs> facts or fiction? Is that is it true that you used the click clack commercial to get the females back in the day? Nah, but D. Love threw me <laughs> under the bus. He's not supposed to tell everybody what happened to us during that time. Come on, man. Wait, I don't. I mean, remember. I'm about to get D. Love a call. I don't remember. I kind of remember the question. Uh, the, the the commercial. Were you in it with a bagu? Bagu, oh no, that, that was the one with Ray Lewis, Abagu, and everybody together. But the Click Clock commercial is the one with the cliques with me, AJ Hawk. Um, the guy that's on ESPN now, I forgot his name. Uh, AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk, yeah. Yeah, so. so yeah, it's me and AJ Hawk, I think. Okay, so you're, you're, for some reason, I just remember Abagu, and it, it was Click Clack or Click Clock or whatever y'all called it back then. I yeah, he did. Uh, he he did one of the commercials too. Yeah, because he was all, you know he and Kevin Plank boys. They like yeah. right hand. They, oh, yeah. That's his right hand. Yeah, yeah. That put Under Armour on the map. Really. Yeah, I played with a Bagu. I played with a Bagu with the Jets and the Cowboys. When Eric, oh wasn't yeah, a, that's right. Yeah, Eric yeah. wasn't nothing but a little snotty nosed kid. So, <laughs> so you guys have one thing in common. Uh, you both made the transition from the football field to the dance floor and appeared on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> So what's harder, dancing or football? And I would ask my dad if he remembers the dance that got him eliminated, but this was the only dance that he had. But Vernon, do you remember the dance that got you eliminated? Uh, man, I was, I, was, I was so hurt. I, I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I was so hurt, man. I didn't want to go home, man. I was having so much fun. Man, I was so ready to go home. I was <laughs> ready to go home, man. Sure. You been you look pretty good, though, man. You look like you knew I, what you were doing. You know, Vernon, it's the first time I ever danced, ever did anything remotely like that. It was out of my comfort zone. They have been asking me for forever, like as long as the show's been on the air. And mm -hmm. I just kept saying no, 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 no. Every year, no, no, no. And then finally, my producers at ESPN was like, dude, just do it. And I was like, no, I don't want to fucking do it. I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to do it because I'm not a big social media guy. And a lot of it, as you know, you have to have a huge social media following to be able to get people to vote. And so Shauna Burgess mm -hmm. was my <laughs> dance partner and she wanted me to get like Twitter and all that to communicate with the fan base. I'm like, I'm never going to do it. So being voted off as the first, I was good with it. I was like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm I don't need to go all the way to the end because it's, it's hard as hell and it took a lot of my time up. It is. It is. I, yeah. man, man, I ain't gonna lie. That's the one time I felt like giving up. I'm not gonna lie to you, Keisha. I, I wanted to give up. It was hard, man. Yeah. And, and, and when I first started, I had already booked my vacation to Hawaii. So I was already going to Maui for like 10 days. And they were like, oh, well, we got to start rehearsing I said, well, I'm not, I'm gonna be in Hawaii. So if y'all want, if y'all want me on the show, I could take time out and come and dance in the morning and practice and learn it in the morning, but I'm gonna be in Hawaii. So you could bring the camera crews, you can bring my dance partner, she can get a free vacation, and she could travel wherever I travel to, because I go back and forth to the East Coast, and they wind up doing it. She got a lot of vacation miles out of it, and we got kicked off the show early. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, it, but it was good. It, it worked itself out. So, you know, but man, it's always a pleasure 
seeing you, getting with you, having fun with you, and I appreciate you for joining me and my son on the podcast. I really do. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. It was an honor. It's an honor, for real. All right, buddy. We're going to be in touch. Okay. That's a wrap for today's show. Thanks again to Vernon Davis for joining the show. Don't forget to subscribe and follow All Facts Pod on social media. Until then, it's Keyshawn. I'm out again. Peace. Peace.